Hello everyone, and it's the fourth week with Fritz. And if you learn how to draw this, you can draw anything. So last week was the really difficult uh, rib cage, and I've put up two videos on it. One is me talking like I'm doing just now, <clears throat> and the other one is a computer simulation where I talk you through drawing it using the shaping it on the computer so it's more stylized so it should be hopefully more clear because it's a pretty tricky thing there's so many curls and shadows and spaces in it that it just requires the most wonderful degree of concentration and if you can do that, you really are on your way to becoming an artist because it requires skill and making your talent more expressive, you know, and that is work, W-O-R-K. You have to work at it. So this week we're looking at the work of the pelvis. We've done this rib cage, and here is Fritz. Up you come, Fritz. So we're going to do this um, this bit here. That here we come out the pelvis. Now you can see there its shape. I always try and describe it as like two butterfly wings. There's this kind of gap in the middle here, and then there's the two connectors for the. This one's loose here. So the two connectors for the uh, upper femur bone, the hip bones, these are the bones, they actually can replace these in a hip operation. They put a new one of these things here and some of this is transplanted into the human being, implanted into the human being. It's made out of some uh, titanium and ceramics and things. So that's one of the big parts of the bones that can be replaced there the hips. So these are the pelvis and the hips. So let's have a look at it in terms of drawing. The good news is it's, oh poor Fritz, there you go. The good news is it's a little bit easier than last week's um, rib cage. So that, that is good news. You'll be some of you will be sighing a, a sigh of intense relief at that news, but uh, it still requires concentration. So I'm using the um, drawings that you should all have these by now. These are the works that you can use to study from. These are from a... If any of you want to find out what book this comes from, it's from a, a publication by Dover, D-O-V-E-R. And they produce rather good art books that are very cheap. So that's a kind of nice combination that I like. And uh, this one is by Albinus, who was in uh, Europe uh, hundreds of years ago. And he produced the first really kind of beautiful anatomy drawings. There were anatomy drawings before that, but they were kind of quite gruesome. But these were very beautiful drawings. So uh, if any of you want to find out more about that, just email or text me and I'll give you information. You, you can't even buy that book, Albinus on Anatomy, probably from Amazon or eBay or Abe Books, which is another website. And you might be able to get it secondhand reasonably cheaply, you know, maybe ten dollars or something like that, maybe even cheaper. So I'm going to just start with the bit that we ended up with last week. So we're moving down the body. You can understand the process now that I have worked out to compose the entire class like a jigsaw puzzle. One bit fits into another bit into the next bit. So we've worked our way down from the skull and we've done the rib cage and now we do this pelvis. So the last thing we did in the rib cage from last week, 
this is the drawing I did in five minutes, was this sternum, uh, not sternum, a uh, sacrum bone down here, this uh, lower part of the spine, and uh, we're going to start with it now. So I'm just going to do this freehand and with the spine bone here it kind of curls in and out so you're if you create it if you think of it like a jigsaw and put it together piece by piece by piece art will make more sense no one flashes a drawing out like a machine or like a photocopier it has to be done using the human consciousness and brain and it is a reflection of you. If you're a person who's disorganized, you'll create a disorganized drawing. If you're a person who's deep, you'll create a deep drawing. If you're a person who's shallow, you'll create a shallow drawing. So art is always, you can't cheat with art. The only, it's about who you are inside and you can develop who you are inside, your inner being in this life. That's one gift we have as human beings is we can work on ourselves. So. Art is like an example of what working on yourself produces. So I'm going to do that bone there and then I'm going to do, you can see I'm doing it very, yeah, you can see that. I'm doing it very roughly and then I'm just going to kind of feel my way out and do these butterfly leaves. Now art, if you get into it, it'll grow with you as you grow older, you know. When you start out at the beginning, you might spend all your time copying from comics. That's what I did. I learnt how to do art by copying from Marvel comics. But as you get older and more mature, your work will become more individual for you, not just like copying anime, which millions of people are doing all over the world. But you'll find your own language that is unique to you, you alone. And who do I mean by you? You, the person who is either sitting there listening to this on the computer or standing trying to do this exercise, who feels the pressure of the seat against them right now. You is the person I'm talking to. So, we're going to go around like that and I'm going to get this shape in the middle. That's actually the sacrum, this bit at the very bottom of the spine. I always get the names mixed up. So I'm just doing them really rough and you can do this as well because we're artists, you know, we're not uh, doctors or uh, medical technicians. We're artists. So we're looking for shapes and we're looking for an understanding rather than a, a scientific uh, treatise. We're trying to understand how this thing fits together and everything fits together in life, you know. So I'm doing these and there's these bottom leaves here, these two bits here I'm kind of, kind of putting in here. So it's kind of got that butterfly shape and then it's got these two, con these two bits down here. Which I'm gonna shade out. And those are kind of going to, for those two bits joined together, it creates the bit going inside where the hip joint is going to fit in. Okay. Now, I don't know what they do in art school in America. Obviously, I went to art school in Britain, but we spent a long time drawing skeletons and models, you know, uh, men and women. Um, and so we learned all about the muscles and we learned all about the bones because that's very important for an artist. You can't just um, pretend that you know these things. You have to uh, start to understand them. So I'm doing the top here, fitting it in. Can you see that? I'm fitting in the hip bone here and I'm just going to do it like that. That's all you have to do this week. Let's see if I can get 
get that round there. So that's the pelvis. And then there's that socket here. You know, there'll be kind of like gristle or some sort of thing that lets the bone move. You know, it's kind of like the same thing in the spine, that kind of more mobile material. And so I'm going to put one there as well. So I've got the hip joints. Get them kind of lined up so that they're, you know, you've, you haven't got one way up, <laughs> one way down. Which would be. Mm -hmm. And it's got that bone, you know, after the, the socket here goes in and then the bone curls around like that. I really like drawing the skeleton. It's cool. It's got so many shapes and it's got so many forms and it's so interesting because when you're drawing it, you're actually somebody who's got a skeleton inside your body. You know, so it's like by doing this, you're having some sort of subliminal awareness of what's inside you. A skeleton. It's nothing to be scared of or else you're scared of yourself. You walk around with this thing inside you all the time. And if you didn't have it inside you, you'd be like a bag of jelly, just <laughs> like protoplasm, just lying on the street. You'd look really weird. So nothing to be scared of with a skeleton. It's something you have with you every day. So I'm just sketching these in fairly quickly, you know, and you can do, you can spend, you know, I have students who've obviously spent hours on this. I have some students who dash it out in, in seconds, it looks like. So, uh, you know, find your own way of doing it. As long as you get something that's real for you, you might be a slow artist, that's good. You might be a quick artist, that's good. As long as the speed is true for you, you might be a dynamic artist, all gusto and fire, or you might be a careful, conscientious artist, all mindfulness and gentleness. They're both good. All art is good. There's nothing there that I see in art that I take offence at. I'm always interested in seeing what comes out of people, you know. I worked in a prison for four years teaching art in a maximum security prison. I've probably told you all this before, but I find it interesting to help these men find a way of expressing themselves through something creative rather than something, you know, antisocial and criminal. And all you need to do is give a human being an opportunity to do something um, that, that is more from themselves and uh, they become happier, you know, and they become more attuned to their real nature rather than that criminal nature. And it, it was good. I, I enjoyed that a lot. So I'm doing these two bits at the bottom here. You can see them joined together. I haven't really done that very great. So <laughs> every time I do it, it's like I'm learning myself how to do it. And I've got this bit here. So it kind of fits in there. This bottom bit of the spine goes down into this kind of leaf bit here. And then these two big pelvis bones here. Kind of looks like an alien or something, you know. I'm always fascinated about what you can do. Life is a mystery, and art is a way of talking about that mystery. And you can keep that excitement for life going throughout the whole of your life. Uh, the great thing about art is you're never bored. You could be like, I think, of Tom Hanks and Castaway put onto a desert island, and you'd be sketching in the sand with a twig. You know, you wouldn't need a computer. So that's it, you know, just these two butterfly wings. 
which go down into these shapes here. It's more difficult to see it on Fritz, but these two shapes here going in. That's it. Let's we'll see how long I've been going. 15 minutes, so I'm not wanting to spend too long because I know people, to be honest, I know myself, you know, if, if a videotape on YouTube, unless it's a movie or something like that, is too long, I'm inclined not to watch the whole thing. So there they are, these two bits at the bottom. The trouble is with art, the more time you spend on it, the better it gets. So I'm trying to do this quick and also good. That does look like it. It looks like a pelvis and you can see what I've done there. The two, the, the, this is the bone from last week which joins in from the bottom of the rib cage. Then you've got these two big bones here of the pelvis which I've kind of described as like butterfly wings. Then you've got these bottom bits here which are these, they're kind of hollow bits going in there and then there's the bottom of the spine here which is the, the um, sacrum and then you've got the two hip joints the round sockets going in there and then the start of the leg which is called the femur that's the largest bone in the body and that goes and fits in there so that's all you're doing this week is fitting these together one two three four take it there do as best as you can submit the work by email or text to me and if you have any questions or anything that you want to talk about, uh, well, text is the quickest way because I always have the iPhone around and uh, email is slightly longer because I'm not always sitting watching the emails. But uh, just feel free to contact me anytime. Okay, that's week four, which is the pill this. Okay, bye for now.